Hi, this is Greg Hughes with 90 Second Website Builder. One of the best ways to display content on your website is to use this tool that we have called the Carousel Tool. It's one of my favorites because it's so easy to use and yet it creates such a dramatic effect on your website. It's down here in the Advanced Tools, although it's actually really simple to use. And all you do, like with anything else, you just click on it and drag a box out onto your canvas. Now what the Carousel Tool is, is it's sort of a slideshow of sorts, only it's better. A slideshow usually just lets you use images or photographs and transition those, but a carousel is a little bit more than that. You can use more than just images. A carousel is sort of a slideshow, but with images, text, video, links, just about anything you can imagine, even jQuery objects can fit inside the carousel tool. You can also make the carousel be any size you want. You can have a tiny little one or a really big one that fills your page. And there are a lot of attributes to the carousel. So let me show you really quick how this works. I'm just going to drag some objects into this carousel. I'm started off with, by default, a four page carousel. You can tell because there are four little dots here. Each of these dots opens up a page. Now by a page, I basically mean a slide or a content area. So right now this is page one. This is page two, etc. Let me put something on page one of the carousel. I'm just going to grab some images that I have off screen here. Let me go find one really quick. Here we go. So I'm going to drag this into the carousel. Now you'll notice that when I do, there's a blue highlight. That's really important. Th this object is not inside the carousel until I see that highlight. So you want to make sure you see that. Let me go grab something else like some text just so you can see we can put anything in here. Okay, there we go. So there's some text. So page one has image and text. Let's go to page two. You'll see it's blank. Let's put some stuff here. Maybe some uh, social media icons just for fun. And on page three, we can put something else. Let's put a big photograph. There we go. I can adjust the carousel size if I want like this. And there we go. We've got another one here. Let's add something else. What can we find? Uh, let's just put some text here in the uh, the last one here just to fill it up. Okay. And maybe a little image. i got an image down here we can use just for the demonstration purposes. So here's our carousel, our four-page carousel. Now we can set the attributes of this, as you would imagine, by double-clicking on the carousel. I want to make sure I'm double-clicking on the carousel and not one of the objects inside the carousel. If I double-click here, I'll get the image properties, but I want the carousel property, so I'm going to double click out here and bring up the carousel properties. Now, there are a lot of things we can do here. Again, there are four pages by default. We can change that. We can put as many as 25 pages if we want to. Watch when I click OK, you'll see there's 25 little buttons here because there's a button for every page. Now, of course, we're not going to use 25 pages. We only have four. I can also set the pause time. This is milliseconds, so that means there's three seconds between each slide change. There's a pause of three. I can also decide which page I want it to start on. It doesn't have to start on page one. We can change this. If I had 25 pages, this would pull down to 25 options here. The duration of the animation or the transition, I can even affect that. It's about a half a second. Which direction the slides go. Now this is kind of important. So in forward mode, it just means that the slides would go all the way forward and then when they're done, it would rewind and go back. In fact, let me show you what that looks like. Since we only have four slides, let me hit F5 to preview that. And you're going to see that we have a slide and then three seconds is going to pass and it just changes to the next one. Three seconds will pass, it'll change to the next one. Then we get to the last slide and since we're in forward motion, it's going to rewind like this and go back to the first one. That's just one effect. Also, I can move from slide to slide without having to wait the three seconds. I can just click these buttons if I want to. Or I can even click these pages and jump to a different slide. Or back, back and forth any way we want to, like this. Okay. But that's just what forward motion does. I can actually set this to forward backwards. So when it gets to the last slide, it just it goes back uh, at the same speed. Or I can do the one I like is forward circular, which means when it gets to the last slide, it just keeps going on through so that the next slide is really the first slide. And it's sort of an endless loop. Anyway, there's a lot of different modes you can set. And now, with the new version, there's actually even special effects. The slides don't have to actually slide. You can fade from one slide to the next, or you can do a drop or a puff. These are all kind of fun. I'll show you. Let's try one here. Let's do the fade. Click OK. I'm going to F5. Watch how the slides change with the fade effect. Rather than sliding, 
they just change like that. You can imagine the things you can do if you let your imagination run wild. Let's try it again. Let's try uh, changing that to something like the rotate. That's quite dramatic. We're going to click OK. F5. And now when the slides change, there's going to be a rotation effect. Kind of cool. And of course, it would depend on the slides that you're using that you would make the decision on whether or not to do that. The point is, you have a lot of creative tools and a lot of creative decisions you can make just in the mode alone. The easing is just how the slide changes uh, in a very subtle way, how it swings or how it eases in and out of the next slide. These are something you can experiment with. They're very subtle differences. You don't have to show the navigation buttons, by the way. That's these arrows here, the previous and the next arrow over here. You don't have to show those. You can disable that by clicking this. Or you can show them and show your own buttons. If you want to browse for an image that you want to use for a previous button, you can do that by clicking here. Same thing for the next button. Or you can decide where these buttons land in the carousel. If we change this to a different number, I'll change this one to 20 so you can see the difference. You can see this button over here came in. It's in 20 pixels. This one's in 4 pixels. So you have full control over where those buttons show. And even if they show, or if you want to use your own. The same is true for the pagination. That's what this is called down here. We don't have to show these little buttons. We can actually hide those. Um, you could use the built-in ones, or you can use none. If we do this, there won't be any. However, you'll see there are some little boxes down here. These boxes are not seen by the end user. This is just in design mode. These have to be here so that you can switch from page to page as you're designing. So when we click on these, we can go to other pages. But when we press F5, you won't see anything there that's actually invisible. This is what it looks like when we don't have any pagination. But of course, we in design mode, we want to be able to get around. So let me double click on that, and we'll enable that pagination again. We don't have to use the built-in images. We can use custom images that we would browse for from our computer. If you do use the built-in images, you can even control that, what color those dots are, if they have a border, what color it is. All of that stuff is completely adjustable, even the shape of those buttons. Under the Style tab for the carousel, you can decide what you want the background to be like. Now, so far, we've just been using a transparent background. That's really the one I use most often, but you don't have to. You could actually make a solid background. Let me pick a, a color that will show. That's maybe a dark gray. Click OK, and you can see the carousel itself has its own background. Double click, go to Style. There's also, we can make an image. We can put an image in the background, gradients, all the good stuff that you would recognize if we want a border around it, how fat that border is, what color it is, and if it's going to be radius. So you can figure all that stuff out. Again, I like the transparent uh, background. Here's one of the reasons I like the transparent background. Let me move the carousel out of the way for just a second. I'm going to move it off camera. And I've got an image down here that makes a really nice background. So this would be a great way to display my carousel. If I have a big image like this, and then I grab the carousel and set it on top of this, since the carousel itself is transparent, my nice background shows through. So that's just another way to do it. Let me hit F5 so you can see what I mean. Yeah, and it looks nice sitting on top of this background. OK, I think you get the idea. There's a lot of things you can do. What I'd like to do next is show you some actual carousels that are that I've already built. So I'm going to open up the index page of a website project that I'm working on for Blackwire Hosting. Now, I don't know if you can see this right off the bat, but I actually have a carousel on this page. It's not a very big carousel. It's only a seven page carousel. You can see it right here in the corner. I'm using it with a transparent background and seven pages. On each page, there's a feature explained in text and kind of an image representation of that feature. So if I click through here in design mode, you can see what I've done. And then on the seventh page, I've actually left it blank because I like the effect that that creates. Let me show you what that looks like when I preview this page. So here's my page. I got rid of the pagination. I also don't have the previous and next arrows. I want these slides to just change on their own. And so I just let the slide show do what it does, or the carousel do what it does. It looks like it's up against the wall there in the server room, and I, I kind of like that effect. And like I said, when it gets to the last slide, there's sort of a, a pause, and then it comes back around to the first slide. So I've got that on the forward circular mode 
for it to do that. That's just one way to use a carousel. I think it's a good way to use it in sort of a streamlined uh, format for this particular web page. Now let me show you another project. I'm actually going to open up a different 90 second website builder website I'm working on. Let me save that. And I'll show you another use of the carousel tool. Here's the 90 second website builder website in fact. And I use the carousel tool quite a lot. In fact on this page you can see I've got 23 pages in this particular carousel. This is just simply a display of some of the websites that are built by some of our customers. And I think it's just a great way to show off their handiwork. So I'll show you this by clicking F5. Let me scroll down so you can see. Here I got rid of the pagination. I didn't want that. Since there are 23 pages, I didn't want 23 dots across the bottom. I think it looks nicer to not have those. But I did leave the arrows in case people want to click through uh, either forward or backward because you can go either direction or you can wait for the slide to change. I've got it set for somewhere around three seconds. But if people want to click through, they can just click these buttons and go right on through like this and see them. Or if they prefer, they can even click the back button if you want to. You can go like this. But anyway, it's a great way to display this particular kind of content. All this is, are, these are just thumbnail images, screenshots of some of the websites people have created with 90 Second Website Builder. And it's just a great way to demonstrate that on our website. I also use the carousel tool a lot on the testimonials page because I get a lot of letters literally every single day from people that love 90 Second Website Builder and sometimes I like to share that information with our audience and so I created a slideshow or a carousel that just has text only and these are just some snippets from some emails that people have sent us uh, talking about their use of 90 Second Website Builder and so you can see the carousel is just a transparent carousel sitting on top of a background I've got the slides changing a little bit slower so people have a chance to read the content. It's set for maybe five to seven seconds and you can uh, click through just like you could with the other one. So that's kind of a, a good example of how to use carousel. But again, you can be as creative as you want. The carousel tool is a very, very fun feature to use. You can put just about anything you can imagine inside a carousel. In fact, you can even put jQuery objects or videos inside the carousel, believe it or not. So play with that and use the carousel tool to display your content in a really fun and dramatic way for the websites that you're building in 90 Second Website Builder.